In this video tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to create this type of collage effect here inside Photoshop Elements. It's a, kind of a fun little technique to experiment with, and every time you do it, you'll kind of come up with a different type of collage layout. But it's something that's really easy to do, and I think you'll enjoy the, the project. Now, we are going to be using a couple of functions from the Designer's Toolkit to kind of speed up the workflow a little bit, but I am going to show you step by step where if you don't have the Designer's Toolkit, how you can do everything in Photoshop Elements by itself. So with that said, let's go ahead and begin. And the first thing, of course, we need to do is create some type of image file to work with. And let's just say I'm going to do a 16 by 20 collage for this example. So there is our 16 by 20. So the first thing we're going to do is come over to our effects tab here. And we're going to choose the Create Guides tool from the Designer's Toolkit, just because I'm a lazy one. And I want to add a one inch margin around the perimeter of my document. So we have the new guidelines in place. And then I'm going to simply make a normal style selection using those new guidelines as a guide. And now here's where it gets interesting. I'm going to switch over to my fixed size selection. And the width should be a quarter of an inch and the height should be 60 inches or something, something big. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to hold down the Alt key, Option key on a Mac, and see that cursor? where you have the little minus sign, that is going to be subtracting from an existing selection. So I'm just going to hold down the Alt key and click. And notice I get part of my selection has been removed. And so I'm just going to kind of come across here. I kind of bounce around and just keep clicking. And you can see how I get all these vertical subtractions from the selection. Then I'm going to flip flop the dimensions and do the same thing horizontally. Click, click, click. And no, no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. I'm just clicking. So you get kind of this weird grid pattern going here of a selection. So I'll go over to my layers palette and create a new layer. And then I'm going to set my foreground color to something. Let's do like a blue color doesn't really matter what it is and then we're gonna fill with our foreground color and the quickest way to do that is keyboard shortcuts so alt backspace or option delete for you Mac folks and there we have it so then we'll deselect which is control D or command D and now we build the collage and this is what how we do it we grab our magic wand tool and we just kinda in our mind visually think hmm, where are my image openings going to be and so I'm gonna click on a square and then I'm gonna free transform that section and drag it over and fill in all those white areas and then I'm gonna come up to the top and do the exact same thing so I just free transform all those white areas just fill in the gaps and then back down here I'm gonna pull that up free transform pull it up so you can see already how I'm kind of building these pieces. So again, I'm just going to click, pull it up, and click, and pull it up, and then back over here, stretch it across. So these will become the areas for my collage. And so I'm going to go ahead and click here. And I always like to kind of have these little uh, steps in the collage for the images. So now everything is all like lined up in a row. See how this one kind of comes farther over than the one on top. I always think that uh, makes for a nice little effect. So you just kind of go wherever you want your image openings to be. Something like that. And let's just do a couple more here just for the effect. And we have one more opening here. See, so every time you do it, depending on how many uh, selections you do, you'll get different amounts of image openings. All right, so there you have it. Now, the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back over to our effects tab and we're going to cheat a little bit and use the duplicate image command just to make an exact copy of this. Because I want to show you, if you have the designer's toolkit, what you can do here. Um, 
with the duplicate. So what we need to do right now over on a layers palette, everything is on layer one. And for simplicity's sake, I want to convert each one of these boxes into a frame layer where I can drag and drop my images into. So it's kind of a multi-step process. So first things we need to do is come back over to the effects tab and come down to the break apart function. And that will actually take, if we look over here in our layers palette, that's actually going to analyze our layout. And you can see every block of this layout is being broken apart from the rest of it. And so Photoshop Elements is kind of analyzing this layout to determine how many image openings there are. And, and once it's finished, It'll kind of finish this up, then we'll convert it into a drag and drop template. So now you can see everything is its own separate layer. Pretty neat stuff, right? So the next step then, of course, is to convert this into a drag and drop template. So we'll go back over to the RFX tab and scroll down here a little bit and choose the convert layout option and let Photoshop Elements do its magic. Now it only takes a second or two depending on the number of image, op image openings you have but once it's done this is where it really becomes fun is because we can drag and drop our images and because each one of the boxes are frame layers we're able just to drag and drop our images and the images themselves notice how they always snap right to the size of our image opening so it's just a matter of dragging and dropping images in here and that's really all there is to it to then populate this template. One last one here. And then of course we can use our arrow keys to find the exact placement of the image within the image opening. And then what I did is I came over to my layers palette of course. My background layer I just filled it with black. We can just turn off our guidelines so you can see this a little bit better. And that looks great just like it is. Or we could come back over here to our effects tab and choose our layer styles. And then we could apply one of these layer styles. Now these are layer styles that we've added to Photoshop Elements. And all this is is just a really basic little white stroke around each one of our image openings here. And there you have it. A great looking collage very quick and easy. So let's go ahead and close that out. We're not going to save it. Let's go back over to our layers palette. So what if we don't have the designer's toolkit? How do we do this in Photoshop Elements all by itself? Well, there's a couple of options that you have, okay? And it's really just a matter of how you like to work. And there's pros and cons to both. So first, let me just show you the most basic technique. What we're going to do is we're going to take an image and I'm going to drag and drop it from the project bin right inside my document here. Okay, so my image is kind of tucked over in the corner here. Now I'm going to grab my magic wand tool and I'm going to choose a different option here which is sample all layers. So I'm on my image layer and I'm going to click and it, notice how it sampled the blue color from the layer one below. And that's kind of what I was looking for. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask on my image layer which by the way happens to be uh, a smart object now. The advantage to that, of course, is we can scale the image up or down all we want without any loss of image quality. Now, our image that we had tucked down here in the corner is gone. Why is it gone? Well, because if you look on our layer mask, everything's black down here. You're not going to be able to see anything. So if I unlink the layer mask to the image, unlink, just click on the little link. There we go. Another little tip for you. If we come in here and choose panel options, I like, oh, it's already uh, at the uh, the largest thumbnail size, but I think by default it actually uses one of these smaller thumbnail sizes, but make it nice and big so we have the largest thumbnail here in the layers palette we can. So I'm on my layer mask right now, but if I click on my image layer, then I can use my free transform. There it is. See that? And then I can pull it up here, and then I can resize it, and then I'm just going to link that back together. So that's one way to do it. And actually that that's probably the way I prefer to do it. Um, there's a few more steps involved, um, but I actually prefer that method. Now there is another method, and that method would be to do kind of like a manual break apart, in that we're on layer one, and so I click, right? And then I hold Shift Control J, or Shift Command J. Control J will duplicate a layer. Shift Control J will duplicate and cut. See? So you see that square has been cut from the original layer, right? And we'll just delete this. And then we go through that same process for every single layer. 
cut, go back to layer one, cut. That's basically what that break apart, that automated break apart is doing for us, except this, this is just a manual process. Convert, putting everything on its own separate layer, which now it is. And so now what we can do is we can use the clipping mask option. So how does that work? Well, we have our layer selected, and I'm just going to drag and drop an image on top of the layer and then use the clipping mask by holding down my Alt key or Option key on a Mac and clicking in between the two layers. Boom. See there? And then, we can, of course, we can move our layer, and we can transform the layer to better fit or transform the image to better fit our layer. And then just click on the next one, drag and drop our image, Insert it as a smart object, clipping mask, and drag. Okay, a little less link, unlinking and unlinking of the layer mask and all that mumbo jumbo. Um, but that's how we would go about populating it if we were going to do the manual process and not using those frame layers like we showed previously. So it can still easily be done, just a few less steps going the other route. And that's really all there is to it. So we would just save this as a layered Photoshop file right here, save it in this format, and then we could repopulate it anytime we, we want to. So it's a, just a fun little photo collage technique. Give, give it a try. I think you'll enjoy uh, working with it and creating some nice looking collages. Thanks for watching.